I remember being woken up by a phone call from London. One of those phone calls that you kind of dread getting. Vladimir Putin had gone on uh, Russian state television and had announced the start of this special operation. I do believe we now can cross to our Moscow correspondent. We can speak now to uh, Steve Rosenberg. Uh, Steve, in the last... And we were busy for the whole day, without a second, to really think, to take in the, the magnitude of what had happened. It was a watershed moment when suddenly everything had changed for Russia and for Ukraine and in many ways for the world. There's a lot of anti-Western rhetoric. It's off the scale. And, you know, we're made to feel very much uh, the enemy here, you know. Do you find that friendships with Russians have become strained, have social invitations dried up? To be quite honest, I mean, we're working so hard, all of us here, that there, there's not much time to accept social invitations. Uh, no, I mean, you know, I still have Russian friends. And um, some of them have left the country, some of them have stayed. I was chatting to, to some, some of my uh, foreign colleagues here, and they were saying, that you know, they, in, in some conversations they avoid the subject of, of the war because they know that that can spark quite a difficult conversation uh, with, with people, yeah. This parallel reality that the, the Kremlin has created, it is difficult, it is quite tiring living inside it, right? Because from morning till night in the, in, in the state media, Russia is portrayed not as the aggressor, but as a peace-loving country, which is simply defending itself, defending the motherland. And when you're living with that, I think everybody needs a place to escape to. You know, after a day reporting about the parallel reality, I come home and kind of sit down at the piano and try to kind of um, decompress that way a world of music, something that's nice, something that kind of makes sense. I went through a, a phase of ABBA. ABBA was getting me through things. <laughs> uh, Eurovision Song Contest songs, as bizarre as it may seem, are a good way of relaxing. British TV theme tunes to remind me of home. It seems crazy, doesn't it, when such terrible things are going on, but I think everybody needs a way of kind of switching off. And of course, having family and the dog and things like that, that just helps to kind of uh, remind you of, of what's important in your life and to give you a bit of strength to kind of, yeah, to go back to the parallel reality. I was expecting Rachmaninoff or something like that, but no, British TV, TV, TV things. That's, that's... Uh, wait, uh, did he enter the Eurovision Song Contest? <laughs> Can't remember that. <laughs>